Welcome back to the series Migrate AWS Lambda to Azure Functions. My name is Jeremy Lickness. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And in this episode, we're going to take an existing AWS Lambda function and migrate it to Azure Functions. Let's get started. Our next step is to create a place to migrate the functionality to from AWS Lambda. I'm inside the Azure portal and I'm going to show you one way to create the equivalent of an AWS Lambda using Azure Functions. We'll cover some other approaches later on. I'm going to go ahead and click the plus sign and look for a function app, which is right here. And this is a host for serverless functions. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit, but the first thing we have to give it is a unique name in Azure. If I use something common like Primes, it's telling me that's not available, but if I add migration to the end, this is indeed available. My subscription simply indicates where the bill should be sent. I might have multiple methods of billing, and a resource group is a related set of assets. We'll talk more about that in a bit. I can pick an operating system. I'm going to use the default Windows. I can pick a hosting plan, which I'm going to use the consumption plan, which means we pay for what we use. And then I can pick a location. In this case, I'm doing this in Washington State, so I'm going to go with the West U.S. region. Region. For my runtime stack, it's a Node.js application, and then it's prompting me for storage. Every function app has an associated storage account. It can store logs and metadata, but this also provides automatic functionality out of the box for the application that we'll explore in a little bit. Finally, there's Application Insights. This is similar to CloudWatch in that it provides telemetry and logging for your application. But it's a lot more. We'll dive into some details about that. For now, just know that we can select Application Insights, and it's going to create that automatically for us. So let's click Create. It's going to validate that all of our settings are correct. And then the next step it's going to do is deploy the resources necessary to run our function app. As you can see, my deployment has succeeded. All the assets I need to run my function are available. I'm going to go ahead and pin this to the dashboard. What this will do for me is give me a tile that I can reference that gives me the status of the function and tells me what it is. I can easily click on that tile and I'll access the function application. The function app itself is a host for serverless functions. What's missing is the actual code to run for that. So the host is in place, but we need to add code. Let's add some code by clicking the little plus next to functions to create a new function. This gives me a quick start that asks me if I want to use Visual Studio Code, any editor, or the portal. I'm going to go with the portal. If I choose continue, I then get a set of options of templates that I can start from. If I click more templates, this will give me a list of available starting points. You can see there's a number of ways that our function is called, whether it's a timer, something in queue storage, or an HTTP trigger. We're going to go ahead and pick the HTTP trigger because this is a web API. When I select that, I get to name the function as well as give it an authorization level. I'm going to make it anonymous to access the function and click Create. What this will do is create some default function code for me. What's important to note is that I don't have to create an API gateway to access this function. In Azure, functions have triggers, and triggers can be anything from a file being uploaded to an HTTP request, and everything needed to manage that trigger is handled for you. Here this trigger is going to look for a name in the body or the query string and echo that back. We're going to use this as a starting point for our prime function, but let's go ahead and take a look at the files that were created. And inside of this folder, there's two files. There's the code file and the function.json that gives us something called bindings. We'll cover these in more detail, but this is essentially telling us that an HTTP trigger is what's going to cause this to run. We also have a test harness so that we can run tests against this. Here I'll run with the default name Azure. And we can see that we got a 200 OK status in Hello Azure. I can also go ahead and grab the URL. This is the full path to my function. And I'll start a command prompt. And I'll curl to that function. And if I do it without parameters, 
I get please pass a name on the query string or in the request body. Here I've passed my name and it echoed back, hello Jeremy. Now we have a place to migrate our code to. In the next episode, we'll apply the code and run it. In the meantime, take a look at aka.ms serverless node to learn more about serverless functions using Node.js on Azure.